Oh, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Square the Circle music channel. It's me, your pal, your host, Aaron Major. That's right, that goofy-looking feller over in Western Oregon that likes to talk about, you know, circles and squares, collecting music, music appreciation, all that fun jazz. So, hey, um, while I got you here, <clears throat> I, uh, I decided to play hooky today. Um, yeah, man, we have... Um, you know, forest fires here in Western Oregon, burning bright. It's pretty fucked up, man. Um, and it's wreaking havoc on my um, <clears throat> circulatory system. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I decided to call in sick yesterday, call on sick today as well, because um, I feel like dog shit. And secondly, I needed rest. I needed some, um, I needed a, a bit of a reprieve. I've been a bit of a grump lately <laughs> i just needed some uh some mental wellness days to kind of like just um regroup and uh you know gotta take those types of days to yourself it's important uh so um enough about me let's talk about you guys um you know i always um on days where it's just me which is pretty rare um i've grown uh, you know i've gotten in the habit i've grown to really like just uh Kind of just sifting through the weirdness on YouTube. Um, it's fun. I'm a member of the Vinyl community. And uh, in the Vinyl community, we uh, share ideas and concepts. And we talk about music. And uh, um, people like to create content. And I do as well, obviously. And um, we help each other out. And we subscribe to each other's channels. And we have a great time. So I discovered a new dude this morning. Uh obviously um hails from somewhere in the united kingdom not sure exactly where and i'm not going to even try because that would be uh disrespectful and rude to you but um yeah so uh new channel it's pretty sweet in the vinyl community i had to write it down because i was i kept this is the third time i've tried to record this video and i get right about here and i'm like introducing this new great channel i found Bleh, and i forget his name so i had to write it down uh introducing a new channel that i love it's <laughs> called beardy red viking beardy red viking i don't know his name yet i've only watched a couple of your videos bro but they're fucking rad um the, if you're into um kind of classic metal um dude talks about some really great kind of um classic uh proto metal and modern day metal and um i like metal music too so um yeah beardy red viking everybody check out his channel it's fantastic and he's already uh begun a thread and doing a contest and all kinds of shit because he wanted to get 125 subscribers interesting number i've never seen anyone celebrate uh one and a quarter but uh super cool so let's celebrate one and a quarter you've far surpassed that by now i'm sure once you get once you get that 100 150 subscriber mark it's just kind of like it just keeps happening and it, it just keeps stacking on top of its other uh uh, of itself it's pretty cool so congratulations on your uh your milestone of 125 we're gonna do a bit of a, a themed uh episode for a contest i suppose where uh we're splitting it up into one two and five uh so you said that we had a choice that we could uh shuffle around the first two if you wanted to talk about one band that you despise and then do the two or vice versa two dance two bands you despise and then whatever but um yeah so starting off with the one uh i'm just going to talk about one artist that i despise <laughs> that everyone else uh worships and adores i would just not really trying to judge anyone especially not you know uh new dude who i'm doing this for the what is it the very red uh beardy red viking guy um you just look like the kind of feller that is probably on the same page that I'm on. You, your first mention with absolute vitriol, which I loved so much, was how you detest the band, the American band Aerosmith. And I'm just like, fucking high five, brother. <laughs> I can't stand them either. None of their career, even their 70s shit. I don't like any of it. It's fucking trash. And it's just getting worse and worse and worse. So um, they just have a way of just kind of like getting under your skin and just kind of ruining everything. You know what I mean? Uh, just a quick story in one instance, in fact, that um, my son is eight years old and he, he loves the holidays just like we all do here in uh, the United States. 
Holiday season's fun. We celebrate Christmas. My son's favorite Christmas movie is that Polar Express movie. He loves the Polar Express, the Tom Hanks narrative and whatever. Yeah, it's it's really great. It's kind of like early CGI, so it's kind of creepy. Look, you know, has a really kind of like dark atmosphere, and I like that um, about my Christmas movies. I like the Christmas stories that have that element of kind of you know like ghost story Charles Dickens shit. You know what I mean? I love that stuff. So anyway. My son loves the Polar Express, and like an hour and a half into the Polar Express, like this movie's fan fucking tastic classic story it won like a um, what's this what's the prize in America for um, literature? Is it the Pulitzer or something like that? I don't know. It won the awards, thousands of awards for illustration and whatever. Polar Express is magnificent. Watching this fantastic movie, that's a really great representation of the the original story. Tom Hanks is a fucking master. Uh, anyway, and you get like an hour and a half into this and suddenly you're at the North Pole and the, the elves are singing and it's, it's fucking Steven Tyler's like this singing elf singing like this disgusting rock and blues rock, you know, Christmas tune. And it's, out, it's something out of my night, like my personal nightmare. <laughs> it's like all of a sudden, all of a sudden there's Aerosmith dancing around at the North Pole with these kids singing some terrible fucking song. It's, it's a nightmare. So yeah. I'm on the same page as you, brother. I like it. Um, and the one artist that I detest, um, that everybody adores and worships like a goddamn rock and roll god, I can't stand it. I even have an LP to show off here because, uh, you know, I've tried this guy. If, if I come across a dollar LP of his um, that is in perfect condition, like it's in, you know, very good plus or better can be rated at, um, I just buy it because I keep trying. I keep trying. I listen to as much as I can, and I'm trying to glean anything out of it that I can, can that I can, out of his career. And because, like I said, he's he's worshipped like a, a a pop rock god, um, and I can't stand him. I can't stand him at all, Elton John. <laughs> and this is kind of an iconic, you know, double LP, great art on the front. What a fucking douche! I I just can't stand him. I don't, I don't like any of the music, his personality, everything about him. I just want to fucking slap him in the face. I can't stand Elton John. So, sorry everybody. I really do love this um, iconic art on the cover, though. So, that's another reason I bought it. It was a dollar. <laughs> and it's in fucking absolutely pristine condition. So, there's that. Got that out of the way. Yeah, man, thanks for letting me party with you. Cool channel, and I'll keep uh, I'll keep watching. I'll dig in more. <clears throat> After this, though, I'm probably gonna take a nap because I already feel kind of winded. <laughs> oh man, this atmosphere is terrible. Everything is just like dense and smoky, and has that awful like umber hue. You know what I mean? You go outside, and you're just like, ugh, this is fucking terrible. Um, now let's talk about the stuff I like. A couple of artists, two of them, um, that I love. And I guess maybe you could look at me and be surprised by these. Anyone that watches my channel on the regular, uh, this wouldn't surprise you. I've featured these artists quite a bit. I talk about them here and there, but they always end up happening to be when I'm mentioning, like, I know, like, I don't seem like the type of guy that would be into this, whatever, whatever. But I mean, I was raised on f American folk music, just like everybody was. Mom was a hippie. You know, and so uh, American folk, and especially if you're from an outdoorsy place like the Great Northwest here in Oregon, you know what I mean? Like folk music and country music go hand in hand, and they're often indistinguishable from each other. And especially in that middle period where it's just kind of like middle 60s to middle 70s, folk just sounded like country and country sounded like folk, and everyone was playing with each other. You know what I mean? There was no surprises seeing Chris Christopherson at Woodstock. You know what I mean? Like, it just, that was, it It felt right, you know? Will, you, you know, hanging out with Willie Nelson and, uh, you know, the guys from Kiss. Like, whatever, you know what I mean? Like, it, those things kind of go hand in hand. And so, um, I don't know why I just threw Kiss into that comparison. That's, yeah. I'm on one today. Obviously, you can tell my blood's a little thin. <laughs> so, um, two artists that uh, I guess you really wouldn't expect a dude like me to be into, but um, especially as much as I am, because I have heralded this album as being uh, 
it's a perfect album to me from top to bottom start to finish it's an absolutely mad it's a it's a masterpiece to me <laughs> everyone else is probably gonna laugh about that um but john denver's uh, rocky mountain high like i said i grew up on this album uh indistinguishable from the um you know the sensibilities of folk of the 70s and, and country music of the 60s and 70s and they all just kind of like swirl into a wonderful um mix of i don't know this like i said this album's a masterpiece beautiful art everything about it um yeah i, I honestly and i wouldn't even go as far as to say i'm a john denver fan you know what i mean i'm just a <laughs> uh i'm one of those types of dudes that says that rocky mountain high is just one of the greatest albums uh, ever recorded so just my opinion man uh and then the other artist i have a few to show off because um no one cares about this shit i think it's fantastic it's like i said on my channel i talk about all kinds of wonderful like nerd shit you know soft jazz world music um i especially love stuff that has um celtic flavors in it um so yeah, shout out to you, uh, Super Red Viking Man, <laughs> obviously, from that area of the world. Uh, I, too, come from, you know, we have a shared heritage. My, you know, our cultures mix, and we're all from the old world. So that's from the, the neck of the woods that my family's from, brother. So um, I got some ginger in my, in my shit. If I let it grow out any longer, you can see it. I have a, a little bit of a red beard. Uh, but I love that. I love Celtic music, traditional folk stuff, but as well as I love the really like new jazz and <laughs> folk fusion, uh, rock fusion stuff when Celtic fused with pop music, you know, in the eighties, um, pretty effing cool, more like the mid seventies really. But, um, and this was like one of the most, uh, intensely, uh, nerdy <laughs> factions of that sound uh the chip davis's manheim steamroller i adore it but it, the, especially the series that manheim steamroller did in the 70s and 80s the fresh air series this is fresh air part three it's my favorite in the series they they did all the way up through like nine or ten parts like in the 90s and early 2000s they still perform live uh everywhere i think they're an american outfit uh i believe um but yeah fresh air uh part three is my favorite um i stumbled across part four recently i've featured this on my channel <laughs> uh part four i've had this a, a million times but this one's hand autographed and signed by chip davis <laughs> who's the 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 guy the you know main creator of this group so he's the drummer too he's a the drummer heads up the band kind of cool and uh this one just to throw in at the end of the mix kind of neat they did a um an important wildlife preservation uh, thingamajig where they, you know, recorded this album. All the proceeds, of course, go to save, you know, uh, animals that are endangered all throughout the 80s and 90s. Pretty neat. So, yeah. Love me some Mannheim Steamroller, everyone. It's, you know, it turns everyone off. And so you can find at secondhand stores, you know, junk stores around here. You find those for a dollar and they're pristine no because nobody listens to it nobody ever touches it so they literally went from you know the record shelf brand new directly into the second hand stores lost all their value and it's kind of bizarre so um luckily they perform live and <laughs> can support themselves cool fucking band so um i'll try to button it up yeah if anyone's new to my channel you know that I get into a habit of <laughs> kind of just rambling on. So um, I'll try to finish up here. What was the last two? 125, one, two, five albums. Oh, yeah, five albums from the last five years that you just can't put down. Uh, for real, I'm a huge victim of this type of behavior <laughs> where I latch onto something and spin the fuck out of it. And it almost never leaves like this pile, you know what I mean? Or like behind here, you know, that's just kind of like the constant play pile always on rotation. <laughs> so here's five that are always on rotation, uh, in my home constantly. Um, this one I hear, I'll do this one first. I talk about this a lot. This was on my top albums. Probably, it was probably like, um, number five, maybe number five, number four. 
um, on my top 10 of the year 2020. That's when I started my channel back in uh, early 2020, right at the, the height of uh, lockdown here in America and in the United States. We, we finally decided that we ought to <laughs> probably ought to shut shit down. Uh, it took us all the way until March of 2020. Um, so that's what it was kind of ironic. It was like literally the weekend of my 40th birthday. And I was you know, excited about 40th birthday, this and that. But um, right around the same time, it was only a month before the shutdown, my mother died. And so <laughs> it was it was a really tough, uh, tough month, <laughs> February to March uh, for this guy. <clears throat> and so lockdown started. And I was like, man, I'm not playing rock and roll anymore. You know, I'm an old fart. I got kids. I got a full time job. I don't play music anymore. I better do something to like scratch this itch. I've always had this, um, not in a really creepy narcissistic like way, like, but I love to perform for people. And that's just something that I've always been good at. Um, and I've always been involved in like, you know, theater and like playing for organizations. I've, I'm a drummer and uh, musical theater and, and just stuff like that. I, I grew up in a family and a household steeped in that type of uh, art. And so, I like to kind of, I like to kind of sing and dance for people in a sense, you know what I mean? I, I use that expression <laughs> as a metaphor, you know what I mean? I like to sing and dance for people. It's just kind of performing monkey type of guy. Um, but yeah, where was I going with this? I doing these YouTube videos, this thing, it's, it's just kind of like, I don't know. I just decided to talk about records and, uh, I've been doing it for almost two years now. It's been kind of fun. This was um, one of my first things that I ever featured and talked about. I was super excited about it then, and I'm incredibly excited about it still. Two years later, almost three years later, a uh, fantastic release from 2020, a group called The North Americans. The North Americans, this album's called Roped In. Uh, this is incredibly uh, subtle beauty, uh, two players, two instruments. Uh, pedal steel guitar and uh, acoustic guitar. I think it's pedal steel. I always mix up the two, pedal steel and lap steel. It's not, ah, oh, fuck me, I don't think it's pedal steel. Maybe it's lap steel. <laughs> not a guitar player, obviously, you can tell. Um, anyway, this album's gorgeous. And it's just, like I said, really subtle soundscape, mellowed out Americana. Um, yeah, really fantastic album. So everybody, Ought to check this out. I can't stop playing it. I play it all the time because it's instrumental, just kind of ambient chill music. It just serves all purposes. You know what I mean? I put it on when I wake up in the morning or I get home from work and I'm frustrated and I put this on and I feel better. It's just all hours, any day type of music for me. It suits my uh, sensibilities, tickles my fancy, whatever you want to say. Number two on that list for me, another one that just won't quit. Uh, really interesting, um, I guess you wouldn't say really interesting story. It's not an interesting story, but this kind of stuff happens a lot. Um, but the, what makes it so interesting to me is you don't see instances of this happen very often in the rock and roll world where a band will like be from the United States, grow up here, live here, start a career here, and then just up and decide, I wanna move to Europe. You know what I mean? Um, wherein, like, maybe it ne wasn't necessarily like a career-based move. It was just kind of more of like a personal type of thing. Like, hey, I, I want to do this. How does this sound to you? And then they, you know, as a band of brothers and creators, they're just like, that does sound great. We should pack up our shit and move from Massachusetts to <laughs> Germany. And that's what these guys did. And I respect the fuck out of that. Their career has been even gotten even stronger uh, over this period. And I think their bass player even maintained his situation here in the United States. They still somehow crank out albums and just they tour and they're probably my favorite hard, heavy, you know, heavy hard rock band right now. I guess you could call them, uh, they're definitely like kind of prog adjacent and kind of like mixed in with the doom metal kind of sound and, uh, you know, stoner rock world, um, multi-faced, I guess multi-faceted, um, they wear a lot of hats and I dig it. And what they're doing more so these days is more of kind of a progressive prog, prog sound these guys have to them. 
And um, this was the period when they were making the move from the U.S. over to Berlin, and they had, they had to get a new drummer. Um, I think, you know, their original drummer uh, wanted to maintain his life here, probably had children, something like that. Um, and everyone else went to Berlin and they, you know, shacked up with a bunch of guys over there and had these sessions, the gold and silver sessions by the band Elder. Um, fucking sick, guys. <laughs> really, really amazing. I talk about these guys incessantly on my channel. They also had, you know, a release after this in 2021 called Omens that was huge. So you can hear a lot of kind of the, you know, the salad, <laughs> the salad being served. Uh, this is like an aperitif, an appetizer to, appetizer to the big LP release um, in 2021. But this was uh, 2019? Yeah, 2019 they released this, an EP, Gold and Silver Sessions. It's only three tracks, uh, one on the B side, two on the A side. They're all absolutely magnificent, incredibly experimental, instrumental. So there's no vocalizations. Uh, a lot of the instrumentations actually were played uh, strictly by their guitar and singer, Guitar player singer, his name's uh, Nick DeSalvo. Uh, he played the drums on a, a track of this and just kind of like, you know, in, in, you know, typical EP fashion, they're just trying to get some, you know, get some stuff out to the world uh, before putting out their newest album. So this is huge to me. Um, pardon me, everybody. I had a notification come up on my phone and I need to close it. There we go. Sorry about the interruption. Uh, important band, one of my most favorite bands of the last five, six years. Um, so yeah, everybody needs to check out Elder. Everything from five years ago, 2017, when they released Reflections of a Floating World, which is fucking top notch. Everything before that's really great too. Wonderful formative sound, you know, but they were more kind of like doom metal, which I love. Um, but then they just kind of like hard flip in 2017 with Reflections of a Floating World and they just became like this insanely cool, psych rock stoner prog band i fucking love them <laughs> they're so good um thanks again for letting me play today guys even though we're homesick <laughs> um i'll uh, button it up here what was that that was the second one here's the third one uh recently turned on to this band by one of my best friends uh, we have um, a lot of shared interests and musically and a lot of you know the same tastes we grew up together as kids we've been friends for 32 years uh, shout out to my homie Nick Phillips, love you, buddy. Um, he was he introduced me to this group, and I'm sure glad he did. This is one of my favorite bands and favorite albums again of the last five years. This is a group called, um, pardon me, what are they called again? <laughs> Greet Death, <laughs> Greet Death. Um, and this was, I think, their first, not their first LP. This was their probably second LP, uh, 2019, I believe, as well, something right around there. Um, New Hell by Greet Death, fantastic album. Really great, just kind of like um, reminiscence of uh, alt rock of the 90s and 2000s, some heavier elements, uh, some really great kind of like uh, guitar rock elements, you know what I mean? But still just kind of more like, you know, millennial, millennial dudes making millennial rock, um, which a lot of times I don't really, I don't really gravitate toward because I fucking hated that era. Of the turn, you know, the turn of the century rock, um, rock and roll turn of our of our century uh, was fucking trash primarily. Um, you know, everything from basically, I say the the bad years were like ninety eight to like two thousand eight. That on well, practically an entire decade, um, music was just trash. Rock music was just trash, and um, you had to search really hard <laughs> for the gems. You know, the little nuggets of gold, um, diamonds in the rough in that decade. Uh, not to say these guys were from that decade. I said these guys were, um, they were uh, learning how to play their instruments in that decade. And they probably, you can tell they just kind of like latched on to the stuff that was kind of dripping out of the 90s. And they probably became, you know, teenagers and young adults throughout the first few years of the 2000s. And uh, the music reflects that. I hear a lot of like, like I said, you know, bands from the 90s, Smashing Pumpkins, Failure, stuff like that. Um, but really great production, great sound, unique vocal stylings, uh, unlike any of the rock and roll that you're really hearing from the new boys. Uh, so yeah, 
love this label too. They put out their music on a record label called Death Wish. Death Wish Records. Check out everything on Death Wish, guys. Fucking incredible. All right, getting to a close. This was my my favorite album of last year. Uh, I talk about it quite a bit. Number one for me on my list of 2021. This band called Gin. Gin from uh, I believe they're from Bordeaux, France. Um, sing in English a lot of the times, which is really cool. It's definitely interspersed with some kind of like, you know, um, some French, some French twang. There's quite a bit of French twang in here, but I think primarily a lot of their lyrics are being sung in English, which is cool. I don't really focus in hard on the lyrics a lot of times because I'm fully immersed in their sound and the music that's, you know, transpiring, which is pretty fucking amazing. You're getting a lot of like, shut the hell up. Sorry, my budgie's got a lot to say today. <laughs> Anytime the sun beams out a tiny bit through the smoke, <laughs> he starts chirping his little balls off, little fucker. All right, so anyway, where was I? This album's dope. It's, like I said, reminiscence of, like, uh, early Black Sabbath, some prog elements, like, even, like, literally, like, you're getting some kind of, like, deeper kind of, like, you know, King Crimson and ELP, not ELP, but um, definitely the brooding, darker uh, prog elements of like the Canterbury era and, and heavy Black Sabbath. And there's there's like doom metal moments in this and some pretty sludgy shit, but then like B-side tracks that are like nine and a half minutes long where you're like, there's lots of really cool like prog inspirations in here too. Um, yeah, even some really hooky moments, you know, hook, uh, 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 not popular rock type hooks, obviously, but just kind of like, you know, melody. There's melody in here, and I like that about um, my metal and, you know, my hard rock. Um, there's got to be some really great kind of like hook you, hook you kind of melody moments. And there is, there's a lot of this stuff. Female singer, uh, female vocalist, she also plays the fucking electric harp. <laughs> it's just really super cool, uh, witchy shit from France. Uh, so yeah, everybody check it out. Oh, sorry, the album's called Meandering Soul. Meandering Soul 2021, my favorite record of 2021. And here is also my favorite record of the, the previous year, 2020. Uh, I can't stop listening to this. I can't stop listening to their entire discography. Uh, I don't have their first two on vinyl, um, but how I feel about their first two is just... Um, you know, they're just not as good. They're, you know, the band changed members uh, all at one one time, one period, of right around like, gosh, I want to say 2007. They got a new singer, so that kind of gives the band a complete facelift. And they, I believe they brought in a new guitar player as well. Uh, and then they made three albums from 2011 till present day till this one in 2021. And they're all absolutely fucking magnificent and if you like um prog rock if you like the sound of the classic prog canterbury and and beyond you know seven seventies 70s prog uh you get that mix those really fantastic elements and instruments from the era the keyboardist in this band is really really hip on getting you know vintage gear so you've got that vintage mellotron sound and you know all the the moog and just all the really fantastic um you know, keyboard heavy elements to this band, but still like a really rip roaring rock and roll sound as well. Uh, reminiscent of like, you know, bass, bass guitar driven riffs um, from Yes and um, elements from, you know, the place that, in the world that these guys are from. And you can tell they were, they grew up listening in the 90s. They grew up listening to Anglegard is, is you can definitely tell <laughs> that they were 90s, you know, 80s and 90s boys that were listening to Anglegard, because they're from Norway. They're from Trondheim, uh, I believe. Are they from Trondheim, or are they from uh, somewhere in there? Somewhere in the lowlands of Norway, I believe. But yeah, the band Wobbler. Fucking dope. They they brought this out after like a long stint, a five-year, probably about five-year stint of no music. And then just kind of like, boom. Oh, this was exciting to me. Definitely my album of the year. Uh, it's called Dwellers of the Deep. Uh, 2020, yeah, 2020, Dwellers of the Deep by the band Wobbler. Yeah, I just can't stop. <laughs> can't stop listening to this shit. In uh, similar fashion to what they've done in the past, their their LPs are like 
four songs. There's almost always like a sidelong epic track on the last three albums that they've done. Well, I guess that's not true for Rights at Dawn. Rights at Dawn was kind of more of just like a, it, it was uh, not formulaic, but the formula was that of a, a pop rock album. You know what I mean? It's the popular rock albums, like eight tracks. Every track's like, you know, five to seven minute range. Uh, and they're all just really just, you know, catchy, uh, popular, you know, that sound just laden with that kind of like typical sound that you, you get from something that's almost like a radio song. But they're not like that. Yeah, it's they're incredibly uh, inventive. Um, and if you don't like prog rock, you're not going to like any of it. <laughs> so everyone check out Wobbler. They're fantastic. Hey, man, thanks for letting me play along again, like I said. And um Jumping on the fun bus, toot toot. Um, that's all from your pal Mage here in Western Oregon. So that's my contest entry. And everybody, like, you know, come on over to my channel and check out my channel too. Um, share the love. So good luck on everything you do, Mr. Red Viking Man. And um, peace be with you.